Welcome to Auto Shop Showcase with Gary Gunn. Today's guest is Tim Ross. Folks, this is Gary Gunn. We're showcasing uh, Tim Ross, uh, a guy that I've known for maybe 20 years, something like that, Tim. We go back to the, you know, doing things together with direct mail and Advo. We'll bring that word up, uh, you know, all those different things. And and uh, glad to have you on the showcase. And, and the question I want to present to you today is that as these shop owners put out that mail in their two, three or four mile range of their businesses and that phone starts ringing, what are some of the X's and O's that you found out that what do they have to execute to make that direct mail pay off immediately? What, what, what do you find? What are the three, maybe four top things? No, those are great questions. You know, the, the beauty about direct mail is that it is a direct response vehicle, right? So when you send it out, people are going to come in. And so what we have found uh, is the successful shop owners they're preparing their team, right? And so some of the things that that impact that direct mail are one, our customers, when they answer the phone or when someone comes in, are they prepared for the customer flow? Do they have enough service advisors? Do they have a right a process, you know, in their shop that take on these customers and get them through some kind of a sales PMI process um, to, to process them correctly? Secondly is, do, do the staff even understand the offers that are available? You're going to get people that call or come <laughs> in or asking, hey, I heard about this $10 off this or a free break check. <clears throat> are your team you know, at your shop, are they prepared to answer those questions so that it sounds like they're competent and, and, you're, and you're all on the same page, right? You know, and the, and the last part would be, you know, are, are you staffed correctly to be able to manage a, a, a direct a flow of customers from start to finish, from meeting them uh, at the curb or answering the call to taking on that car and bringing them in the system to getting them back to the shop uh, for a PMI in a timely manner, right? Do you have a process in place then to talk to the customer about what's going on, what recommendations, you know, all these things. So you're spending all this money <clears throat> to drive these customers to the store or to call you, if you don't have these operational efficiencies in place, if you don't have the staffing in place, then you're really going to struggle to be successful with direct mail or any marketing that you're spending. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wore my green shirt today in, in honor of, of Tim Ross and all, all you guys have done for the automotive industry. And, and you know, the green indicates there's money to be made. Of course, you got to spend a little money on direct mail. It costs. It costs to do Facebook ads. It costs to do yellow pages. I mean, it was used to, there's always been a cost to marketing. Mm -hmm. So I know for experience with working with shop owners that if they get those things in order, it gets in the X and O's when that phone starts ringing and their team is ready, their staff is ready, that's the payoff. And that's when the, the bottom line turns green, if that makes sense. So thank you for sharing that, Tim. Uh, Anything else you want to share just quickly on this particular segment? You know, I would just tell people that, you know, when you get to go forward on your marketing plan, just make sure you include your team, uh, train them on what your expectations are, set your goals so that when you do a marketing, uh, whether it's direct mail or any other tactic, you've got your own internal KPI set up so that you can track and judge how well your team did, how well they performed and what changes you need to make to make it better next time around. And great points, great points. All right, Tim, we'll be back here in a little bit, and we'll take another segment, and we'll be back, guys. Bye-bye. All right, welcome back, uh, Tim. We're at Showcase, and we're showcasing this information so you can make the best decision for your business if direct mail is really a fit for you. And to me, that's what Tim does and Jeff and the people at, at Upswell, they, they walk you through it and see if we can find a fit. And I know, Tim, that you've been in this business, these, this direct mail business, helping automotive shops for over 20 years. So from that point, 20 years ago, well, 19, uh, 20, 2004, right? So in that 20-year span, what has made direct mail better? What, what, what's happened? No, that's a great question. You know, every once in a while you'll get people say they still do direct mail. You know, is that is that dead? You know, and I always say, well, 
it's not dead. It's growing. I think we've grown by probably 20 to 30 percent a year over the last four or five years. Uh, wow. and, and it's what I would say is it's evolved, you know, and what direct mail has done is evolved in several ways. One and probably most importantly is the data uh, and the intelligence behind it now, the technology. You know, we're able to between being able to analyze uh, customer data and market data and then be able to kind of uh, 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 work those two together to create better mailing lists, better targeting, better list segmentation. <clears throat> this has really allowed direct mail to really up its game, right? So it's not just kind of blowing out mail to everybody anymore. Uh, not only are you able to um, find out where your target audience resides and lives, but how often do they come into the shop? How much do they spend? What offers mm. should I send to Gary versus Tim based on your past buying history? So just understanding consumer buying habits, what their buying cadence is, you know, uh, mm. Based on the market, you know, what's their competitive situation like? Having all that data allows companies like myself to really create better marketing programs for print marketing. It's that we can optimize them and evaluate and measure. Because one of the always the big upsides of direct mail has been the ability to target to measure it, right? Because I'm sending it to a mm -hmm. physical address and you can match that back up in a POS system where you see a customer address. So that's one of the advantages. Right. So that data and technology has been a big help. I think the other thing is that variable messaging, excuse me, it's always been round and available, but now printing used to be done on these big offset printers the size of a warehouse. And now these printers are yep. digital printers the size of your desk. And so, and you can do these things a lot more cost efficiently now. So being able to send Gary a particular message, but the guy next door gets a different message based on wow. your buying history. And so being able to provide not only better targeting of who I'm sending it to, but being able to target the messaging to people that I'm targeting it to, that's been a big evolution in our industry. And I'd probably say the last one is the, is the, is the kind of divergent with digital and print coming together uh, and working more as a team. You know, there's, there's technology that's put on a postcard like URLs and QR codes, those were used some in the past, but now they're really more guiding principles on being able to track and measure a piece and then being able to use that in conjunction with a paid search program, a paid social program, a geofencing, an email. Now today, you're seeing a lot of collaboration between digital and print teams, and they're pulling the cart together, which is showing an increased response rate, increased conversion rate, and what happens is it allows clients to evaluate and toggle their marketing spend tactically based on which tactic is performing better. So that evolution of data, the evolution of adding uh, variable printing capabilities, messaging, and then this, this collaborative digital print uh, mentality, those have been the three biggest changes I've seen in the last 20 years that's really taking print to the next step. Oh man, great, great information there. And, and, uh, hang on folks. We're going to do another quick, uh, segment here in just a minute, but Tim, thanks for sharing those. And I know it's certainly changed since I, I've been doing it. Uh, you know, my history is that I remember when I was in the equipment business in Houston, Texas, I would mail a thousand pieces a week. I did that for 20 years. And it wouldn't matter if it was Christmas, didn't matter if it was 4th of July, it, they went out. And, and it worked. And you could tell by the phone calls. You could you know, go up there up in the northwest part of Houston. Oh, well, now they're in the southwest part of Houston. You could track the phone calls. It was absolutely amazing how that direct mail worked. And I remember these stories going in this one shop. And the guy says, you, it, you finally got here. He opens a drawer and pulls out a stack. I'm talking two inches, maybe three inches thick about all the mailers I had mailed him. And he said, I wondered when you were going to get here. And I said, well, sir, there's a phone number on there. You could have called me. And, and it, was, it was really funny because he had been looking at it and looking at it and looking at it and kept them. It's amazing how, how those direct mail pieces work. And it was another story. I was... I was out of the business eight years, 
I mean, I'd been in, we got into the coaching business and to the, you know, tra- you know, the, the helping shop owners. And I get a call from this guy. He says, I got your mailer card right here in front of me. And he said, the, the phone number doesn't work. I said, well, wait a minute. I haven't mailed anything in eight years. Eight years. Yeah. And they had that card. It was amazing. And he tracked me down and he said, I need your help. So I helped the guy. It was, uh, you, you just don't know how long that stuff's going to hang around. Does that make sense? It's yeah. it's something that those impressions are are so valuable, aren't they? Well, and I think that uh, it's funny you bring that up because, you know, I have story after story of customers who have stacks of these, right? And, you know, one of the things I, you know, we always come, if I'm at conventions talking or in meetings like this, is, you know, a postcard is a very personalized piece. Someone gets to touch it and feel it. It's got a longer tail than people think. Um, you yeah. know, unlike, you know, when you use you know, a paid search or some of the digital, it's kind of on your screen and then it's gone, right? And right. It's, it's a little less personal. But the postcard, and that's why we're seeing that mix of postcards staying pretty steady in an overall marketing plan because it's personal, you can touch it, and it does have a nice long tail. Yeah, that's 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 a couple of my experiences. But uh, folks, we're gonna do another segment here in just a few minutes. But Tim, thanks for sharing those about the I would like to call them improvements for the direct mail business, and you can get more specific in what you're doing. Absolutely perfect. Thank you so much, Tim. As you can see on the screen here, this is showcase, and and I find this very interesting. I I don't know where I got this postcard, but if you think back in 1928, what were you and I doing, Tim? 1928. I was my my dad wasn't even born at that point, so that my mother was ago. born in 1928. So it's been a long time ago. Long time. And, yeah, look at this direct mail card in 1928, and they're taking this to Model T users and Model A users, and they're showing them what they can do for X amount of dollars to make a value on their particular vehicle. And and so direct mail, Tim, has been around forever. As long as there's been a Pony Express, as long as there's been mail delivery, it's there. And I was talking to a shop owner the other day, and he said he was using the uh, EDDM. And maybe you can help explain that. And he says it's really not working too well. And and why wouldn't it work versus, let's say, an upswell and how you guys approach direct mail? So give us a little background on that, Tim. Yeah, you know, direct mail has evolved a lot, right? EDDM is an every door direct mail piece. It's a, it's really a postage program through the post office to try to, you know, help small business owners who are just sending out a few hundred postcards or letters, uh, try to to help them kind of execute that kind of program. You know, the the, the dis- disadvantages though of those types of programs are, you know, there's there's usually um, minimums on how you can print them. You have to physically drop them off at the post office yourself. And really the biggest part is that every door gets it. So it kind of loses that targeting. Uh, we've talked about in other, other um, segments, right? Well, one of the critical points of direct mail is making sure that your audience that you're sending the postcard to is the right audience, right? And so mm-hmm. when you use an every door direct mail, it's a little bit more of a shotgun approach. You're kind of sending it out to everybody. There's no name on there. There's no personalization. You know, it's a very more of a kind of a generic type mailings. And and there's a lot of of your own personal uh, uh, time and labor that you have to put together to create it and find where you're mailing and send it out. And so these are all, you know, comp- more complicated and more challenging steps for business owners that have multiple locations or they're sending out higher volumes of mail or they require more targeting, more market understanding, right? And so for at Upswell, you know, what we've done and, and is really add that targeting, list segmentation, that measuring and tracking. One of the disadvantages of EDDM is that there's no name on there and there's no address on there. It's every door direct mail. So they just drop oh, wow. it, mail, right? Yeah. So one of the components of not just direct mail, but any marketing in general is being able to track and measure it. And 
you know, for us having an address on there and knowing who it went to allows us to match that in your, in your POS system, you know, your point of sale system. So we can figure out <clears throat> who came in and how much they spent. These are all critical data points that you're going to need as you are optimizing and improving your direct mail program in the future. Okay. Well, I know this is a, this is a short segment, but I wanted Tim to address that because a lot of shop owners I've talked to over the years have been doing that and some have had limited success, but I believe another way to do it is approach it from a more direct to the customer type operation because, and, and remember when we used to do Advo, where did Advo go? Yeah. You know, an Advo. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, and, it's more of a coupon type shopper person. Right. And so if yeah. there's a right or a wrong, it's just a matter of who are you trying to generate from a customer standpoint. Right. And sure. <clears throat> you know, there's really not that much of a price difference between EDDM and traditional direct mail that a company like Mike Upswell would do. Uh, and so that's why I would encourage business owners to make sure it, it's not just getting a mailing out the door, but getting one that is going to give you the ROI and the return you need to continue to help grow your business. So that's why it's important to work with with a partner who is focused on the end game, not just the invoice. Okay. All right. Thanks for sharing that. I appreciate it very much. And we'll head on to the next segment. Excellent. Okay. Hey, folks, I got, we have Tim Ross once again. And you know, there's something that I want Tim to address and talk about today. And it's really about Mudlick Mail. I know you probably heard of Mudlick Mail. What a crazy name for a company. What a, what a, what, 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 what's this have to do with Mudlick? What, what's it have to do with anything? But really, they were, and Tim, and his partners, uh, Greg, and all the people that worked there were pioneers in taking direct mail to these automotive shop repair owners, if you think about it. And we saw, Tim, we saw massive improvement in numbers. I mean, people would do 80000 a month. Now they're doing 150, 160. We've had people go from a million dollars, you know, a year to two and three million by applying this tactic from this crazy company called Mudlick, right? And so kind of walk us through how you seeded that, how it became what it is and and where you got to upswell today. And just give us a brief historical view of this, because I say you guys are pioneers and the, the pioneer always has a story. So tell us the story. No, great question. And I appreciate it, Gary. You know, I started this with my partner, Greg Sands, 16 years ago, you know, what we saw was a need in the automotive repair industry to not only bring in better quality customers, but do it in a consistent manner. But we had to, we had to address some of the operational efficiencies that this type of marketing was going to cause you know, because mm -hmm. the direct mail we knew would, would target more higher middle income customers. We knew that 85% of the customers that come are from a three mile radius, right? Because convenience is a big part of a customer's decision, right? And and so, you know, for us, we cre we wanted to create a company that not only could help drive in those top customers, but then we had to build in some consulting kind of with it, right? Like we talked, it's like, when's a postcard company talking about not just targeting, but they're talking about why they have oil change offers on their ad and how that impacts customers yeah. coming in. And then how do you have to handle these guys on the phone? Otherwise, they're just going to not show back. You know, they're not going to buy anything. And and so all of a sudden, it was more complicated than just postcards. It was like, well, for self-preservation purposes, we had to create this back end of how do you handle calls? And, you know, we did call tracking numbers so people could hear. They they were shocked at how they, them or their team were handling customers, right? And, and so mm -hmm. it came about by – you know, just that need to generate quality customers and then help our clients convert those customers, right? And so yeah. that was the area that we saw a need for it. And, you know, we we built it up over the years and, and got more and more um, engaged in the auto repair industry with, I mean, we would do seminars and conventions and training and, you know, yeah. we were doing all this non-postcard stuff uh, to build up our postcard business uh, but, you know, it stemmed from 
a guy, Greg Sands, who owned and operated some of the most successful auto repair shops in the country, right? So we kind of took right. his model and and said, let's share this with the world, right? And we shared this mm -hmm. concept of, of, not, of not only how, does, how do we bring in people and customers, but then how do they interact with those customers so that that they can get the biggest bang for their buck on this direct mail, improve response rates, improve. So a lot of it was an education of why we use certain offers. Why do we target people? You know, I want to hit that rich neighborhood 17 miles away versus yeah. a lower income that's like around the corner. It, it was an education process on why do we target? What do we say? What offers we use? And that was kind of the, jo the gist of it, right? We put this together and then it kind of caught fire. And it went from, you know, got, Gary, you and I kind of bumped into each other at a convention in 2008. And we're like, wow. how do we help spread the word? Because, you know, with Greg and I, the passion, we had no intention of growing this business to what it is today. Uh, and for those who aren't really aware, you know, Mudlick, um, Mudlick was created in 2008. Uh, we, Greg and I grew it to about 40 uh, six million in sales in 2018, uh, and then we sold it to a private equity company who had a very big interest in growing the business and and getting interested in the postcard business. And Greg retired, and I stayed on. And this year we'll probably do close to 80 million dollars, right? And so the 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 point of that is, you know, we we just saw it was never meant to get that big. The passion was helping the small business owner, right? helping them mm -hmm. as you and I had bumped into each other numerous times, seeing shop owners struggling to pay their bills or grow their business, or they wanted a second shop and they just didn't feel like they could get there. Being a part of that process and that a tool for them to help them be successful. That's what really drove Mudlick Mail, right? You know, and, and the Mudlick name, that's a whole nother funny concept. And maybe we'll, we'll talk <laughs> over it later day, but yeah, I get that question all the time, <clears throat> but mail is obvious, but Mudlick is a, is an old, you know, Greg was big into wrestling back in the day. And there was a guy from Mudlick, Kentucky. I know you're from Bowling Green, Kentucky. And it just stuck, you know, and I think people don't realize Greg also had a ranch called the Mudlick uh, Ranch helping special needs kids uh, with his forces. And so again, the idea was let's create a special company that helps small businesses and that's kind of how the whole name came together. And, you know, we were very blessed for 10 years, but for us to take it to the next level, to evolve, to add more people, to, to spread the word out, to, you know, in, improve our technologies, we had to grow. And that's where Greg and I got to the point where, hey, we had to make a decision. Do we just keep bootstrapping this ourselves or do we bring on a company that we can partner with? And that's where we brought okay. on a private equity company that that partnered with us to help us grow and as we grow you know we wanted to diversify some of the things that we offer because we've really expanded and that's where the name upswell came in it's 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 just a, a, a umbrella company name that allows us to bring in other companies and other um other services we offer but the same meat and potatoes of mudlick this most of the same staff are still here at upswell i've got uh, uh, I bet half the team here uh, is Mudlick team from back in the day. I've got people that have been here with me for 10, 15 years. So it's been wow. a very big blessing for us, uh, wow. not only to stay together as a group, but to help so many different um, great shop owners out there. And a lot of them have become some of my best friends outside of business. Okay. Well, there's always that question, you know, hey, where did Mudlick go? Well, Mudlick really didn't go anywhere. They just uh, changed names and they offer a bigger uh, cafeteria of products mm -hmm. to better serve the marketplace. And so uh, there's one guy that's on your staff I've, has been there forever, and that's Jeff. You know, uh, he and I talk some, and yep. and uh, he's, he's been there forever. I mean, they, they all say, well, have Jeff call me. Well, they, they remember Jeff, okay? Remember him. So mm -hmm. thank you, Tim, for sharing your wisdom about all these various things that – or in the upswell product catalog, the things that you folks can do. And and guys, if you want to talk about, and ladies out there in automotive shops, if you want to talk about direct mail, just call me. I'll talk to you about it. We'll see if it's a fit for you. 
and then we'll pass it on to somebody at Upswell that can now do more of the details of what's what's where where's the best place to deploy your your advertising money. Maybe it's not acquisition. Maybe it's you've got massive database that they can tap into and do these different things. So don't hesitate to give us a call. And my phone number is direct anytime, 270-282-1262. Gary Gunn and Tim Ross, thank you for pioneering, and you and Greg pioneering this uh, direct mail that has evolved into Upswell, right? Yes, sir. So, folks, have a great day, and thanks for watching these segments. Like and subscribe to AutoShop Showcase on YouTube and your favorite podcasting platform. Visit AutoShopShowcase.com to sign up for monthly mentoring with Gary Gunn.